What's the scariest fact I learned about the larva? I think it's that they like inject kind of acid or venom into creatures to eat them that like liquefies their insides and then they like slurp it out. Um, that's pretty gross. That can't be real. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, oh, their maxillae are hollow, allowing a digestive secretion to be injected in the prey? The organs of an aphid can, for example, be dissolved by this in 90 seconds. What the fuck? Thank you for continuing your journey into learning with ominous practical training video number two. I am Dr. Sheila Showland. As you learned in our first video, this division here is to help you learn about the insects we are studying, how those creatures thrive in their environments, and what happens when test sub hostile threats are introduced into their environment. In this video, my lab assistant, the wonderful Walt, and I will help you learn about three different insects who are currently roaming the backyard as we speak. The larva, the infected larva, and my favorite, the stink bug. To get things rolling, we will ask our scientists an important question. Why put something so horrific as the larva into the backyard? Why the larva is a great question uh, and one that I can answer with because it's gross and horrible. And the more gross and horrible things we put in the game, the better. How did the idea for the larva come about? Uh, that's, that's a fun story, actually. We were talking about needing a type of creature that's kind of between um, an ant and spider as far as threat level. Kaz was talking about, I think it was Kaz, he was talking about how we were really missing like a like a goblin type creature, just like a real jerk that's in the backyard that really just messes up with the player's day. And we did a lot of just thinking and, and whiteboarding and brainstorming and we ended up with a little larva um, and we thought just the look and the feel could be immediately um, described as hostile. I feel like it it suits its role really well, which is this sort of like like mid tier enemy that's really dangerous early game, but then can become a real punching bag for you later on. You're telling me they just they put something gross into the backyard just because they wanted to? Clearly, that isn't something they'd be super happy about doing, right? Right? Who would want to hug that thing? I was overjoyed when I saw the larva because it was exactly what I hoped our creatures would be, which is it, it rides this like this weird line, uh, given our like playful, fun art style. The first time I saw the larva come to life, it was pretty awesome. It was kind of the first creature that we made that got me really excited because it's just, just to have this idea of like, we need something gross. Being able to make something that looks like that, uh, but also fits with the the overall look of the game, which is, you know, bright and colorful, uh, I think is a testament to Ian's skill as an artist. It's got like this creepy, like gross look to it that I enjoyed um, working with. And I got to have fun with that when kind of uh, coming up with the moves it does and what like its attacks and stuff. You know, can you imagine if something that terrifying, that horrifying just flooded the backyard? How, how would you, how would you, how, how would I even deal with that? What? My favorite difficulty that we encountered is uh, a bug that was caused by this this early setup uh, of design work that we had that accidentally made it into the game. It was something that was supposed to be commented out because it was just a test, but uh, it wasn't. 
And it was that the more uh, defensive structures you built around your base, the more larva would be summoned into the world. Some of the earlier players will, will remember this, but they used to be horrible. Like, the, the world was overrun with them. They would come at your base and destroy everything constantly. Uh, there were, like, waves of 20-plus larvae just, like, roaming around, killing everything. So we ended up with uh, what were called the larva swarms, where you would get, like, dozens of these things in the game. And it was, it was a real horror show. Go to commercial. Uh, this is a VHS. I don't care! Go to commercial. If tapes don't have commercials, go to one! When you think about your home, there is one name you can trust above all the rest, and that is Ominent Practical Technologies. And why not continue to show your trust by letting Ominent take care of your thirst by protecting your beverage in this Ominent approved mug? And let others know you support the greatest company in the state. Ominent Practical Technologies. That product looked quite amazing, and I know I certainly want one. Moving on from those scary larvae, well, what's next? <gasps> oh, oh great. Uh, a more grotesque version of an already creepy bug. Awesome. The one thing that we do look at when we're kind of developing a lot of these new biomes, do we have existing creatures that we can morph or change to defy players' expectations and to change up their behavior set? And we looked at all the creatures, what would be cool to be infected, and the infected larva was one of those creatures that rose to the top of our brainstorming sessions when we were doing the haze. I think it blends the uh, more you know naturalistic elements of our game with the uh, the wilder zany science parts of the game and so when it comes to something like the infected larva it's basically like well we look at you know when we're adding more infected creatures to the game what what do we have available to us and what do we think would be a good fit for this puzzle piece of like a new creature that we need the infected creatures are our own kind of thing right um they're not super based on reality so we have the ability to make kind of fill in gaps that are missing and, and make kind of whatever we want and so the infected larva what what i wanted with that guy was basically just like chaos for the player the day-to-day -day goals of the infected larva are just to ruin your day like they wake up in the morning and they think how can I make your day specifically worse? The infected larva is pretty interesting as a combat opponent. It's one thing that has like a um, explosive hazard that you have to avoid. Um, so it kind of makes the melee dance um, a little bit more interesting where you have to kind of pay attention to see, you know, when that explosion happens and back off. So some of the challenges with, with all the infected creatures actually is um, they're on their own kind of team, which means if they interact with any of the other creatures in the backyard, they're pretty much going to attack them. Um, and and it's, a, it's a tough balancing act, letting creatures attack each other, but then also kind of not just flooding the player with free items if that makes sense. Um, so it, it's tough to introduce a creature that's aggressive to everything else, but then also keep it kind of tight in an area where it can't just wreak havoc on everything. Um, additionally, all the explosions that the infected creatures cause um, topple grass blades and, and harvest and break harvestables. So if, if we're not too careful, you, you might see it with like the infected ladybugs in the uh, spread out throughout the yard, they'll just like level entire fields of grass and it, it gets pretty dangerous. Now that we're done talking about those monsters, it's time to talk about one of my favorite bugs, the stink bug. What? Haven't you seen their mouths? They're so adorable. I think the stink bug was one of the early creatures that we did in the game. Um, one of the things that we really liked about stink bugs is one, I think we all have 
as kids, as adults, I think we all have encounters with stink bugs. We're making a game about bugs. Of course, there's going to be a stink bug in it. <laughs> so the stink bug actually has uh, a sort of interesting origin where it, it comes from a very game design need, which is we want all of the creatures in the yard to feel distinct, no pun intended, from one another. So one of the, the good ways that you have of distinguishing creatures is with their attacks. And what the stink bug gets us is this um, area of effect attack, right? They, they, especially in a multiplayer game, you can have, you know, all of your friends surround something and beat it up and kill it real quick. But if suddenly you have these areas that you can't go into because they're hazardous, horrible poison gas, we can we can use that as a new combat experience uh, that feels extremely distinct from something like uh, a spider or a ladybug that has these up close attacks. Once you start getting used to playing and getting comfortable with the combat, and starting to level up your equipment and getting better equipment, uh, you can start taking on these challenges, which are, you know, such as the stink bug, which are a little bit on the outskirts of the grasslands. Um, and they provide kind of that gate for us of like, hey, before you can really progress past the grasslands, you should take on some of these more um, kind of bigger, tankier creatures and seeing how you fare. So like, it's it's a little bit of a test for the, the player. Hey kid, you bored? Yeah. Do you want to paint? No, too messy. Do you want to play a game? No, too stationary. Do you want to draw? No, I only know how to draw lines. Well then check this out. Why did we go to a commercial? Sponsors? What do you mean sponsors? We own every... Oh, we're rolling? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> so, stink bugs seem like a challenge, but what was the most challenging aspect about bringing them into the backyard? Hmm? So some of the difficulties with stink bug, I would say, are um, similar to something that we've dealt with with all of our larger bugs, which is just their size. They're really big. They get caught up on things um, and it can be difficult for them to navigate around the yard. So that that's actually the source of the grass blades bending when a large creature moves past them. Uh, it, it serves two purposes. The first of which is to allow larger creatures like the stink bug or the wolf spider to navigate through the yard unhindered by this. Uh, the other effect is uh, something that you can call the Jurassic Park effect, uh, where when you see the, the grass waving in the distance, you know something big is out there and it creates this really cool emotional moment. Originally, the stink bug was actually immune to the haze gas because we were like, gas, it's all the same. Like, if it's immune to its own gas, it's immune to the haze gas. Um, so we initially placed it as like the main creature in the haze. Uh, but I didn't really like that because the solution to kind of the haze is to equip the gas mask, but then also equipping the gas mask makes stink bug fights really easy. So. It was kind of like a double solution for for one or for two problems. So eventually we kind of pivoted so that they inhabit a lot of dead grass areas, but they are not immune to the haze. And luckily we were able to to pivot the haze creatures into kind of the chaotic infected explosion scape that it is now. Yes, I did have to say they were adorable. I wasn't lying. Have you seen how they look when they first wake up? Pure magic, nature at work, the world correcting all their wrongs. And so the stink bug waking up uh, and stretching and farting is just like, it's just great. Like there, there's so much personality that goes into all of these creatures that it really makes them feel like more than just a mindless insect. So that's actually uh, two animations. Um... When they wake up, they they don't necessarily have to do that, but it's usually 
um, they wake up unhappy and their only path to happiness is releasing gas. So naturally every day that usually means that they wake up, stretch and then release gas. The, the thing we wanted to, I wanted to achieve with the stink bug is I want it to be like this bag of gas when, and you could see it like it inflates to this like almost ball shape with filled with gas. And it's, uh, I just wanted to get that. We worked uh, a bit to get that certain feel and shape to it. So that was, I was proud of that one that came out the way we wanted it to. I think it looks pretty good. And looks pretty good it does, Dr. Spurlock. So there you have it. A look at three of the interesting creatures we have set up in the backyard. But this is just the tip of the iceberg, as I say, because I invented that phrase. We have plenty of more insects creatures, and even spiders to learn about in this series. So look forward to the next volume. And as always, be kind and rewind for the next viewer.